All right, what is up YouTube? Back at it again with more One Piece live action from Netflix news. As today we have another article from the same writer as the news from my last video, which was talking about the specifics and the details of Eiichiro Oda's involvement with the One Piece live action. So yeah, if you wanna know more about Oda's involvement and the specifics of what he actually did, for the live action, definitely feel free to check that video out. But for this video, I wanted to talk about the journalist whose name is Kirsten actually speaking directly to the cast of the Straw Hat Pirates. So yeah, I chose this article for today's video because I feel like even though there are other interviews and articles that have come out about the cast and crew of the One Piece live action, I feel like this one was pretty straightforward enough and it had something to offer from every crew member of the Straw Hat Pirates that I felt like it would make for a good video. And then maybe later on, I can find other articles that are a bit longer and actually make separate videos about each member of the Straw Hat Pirates crew and maybe go for a more in-depth interview or article about each of those and make a video for each of them but we'll see but for now i want to just kind of make one that you know has a little bit to offer from every member of the crew and yeah we'll get a little bit of insight and behind the scenes conversation about you know what the actors and actresses had to say about getting their roles and playing the characters and being fans of the one piece franchise so yeah without further ado Let's get into it. In the penthouse of Netflix's New York City offices on Thursday morning last week, Inyaki Godoy was suddenly ushered in front of a small group of reporters. The first of Netflix's One Piece's core group of five actors asked to describe their characters. In Godoy's case, the protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy, quote, he's optimistic, he means a lot to me, Godoy said. It was a really hard role to play, but, Godoy paused slightly and stood up straight, I think I did a good job. End quote. Being in a room with all five members of the upcoming live action anime adaptation's main cast, which also includes Emily Rudd as Nami, Makinyu as Zoro, Jacob Romero Gibson as Usab, and Taz Skyler as Sanji, was a delight. I told Gibson that I was trying to think of some questions on the fly, and Romero countered, we can also just hang out. The experience as a fan of One Piece was also bizarre. After the actor's time had run out, I chatted with some other writers, many of whom were wearing little nods of One Piece fandom in their outfits. We had all come to the same conclusion. Each of these actors gives off uncannily similar vibes to their characters. For example, Skylar was effortlessly holding court with a circle of reporters. He was exceedingly friendly, charming, and approachable. He suggested everyone do icebreakers. The group settled on favorite ice cream flavor and favorite fruit. Halfway through his delightful exercise, I realized Sanji's actor had succeeded in surrounding himself almost entirely with women. I pointed this out and Skylar fell sideways onto the couch, doubled over in laughter. These accidental serendipities kept happening. An event organizer came by while I was chatting with Gibson to ask who I hadn't spoken with yet, and we all realized McKinney was not in the room. Gibson was right there. Zoro always gets lost. And lost he stayed. I didn't get the chance to chat with him. And then, of course, there's Godoy. Every video I've seen of Godoy from Netflix's social media and teasers has made me think, damn, that guy really gives off Luffy vibes. Standing in person with Godoy, attempting to scavenge questions from my brain for a one-on-one -on -one interview I was not expecting, I had a weird little starstruck moment. Godoy is confident and direct. He conversed with me at very close range. He looks you right in the eye when he talks to you. He's affable, but doesn't bullshit and I, supposed professional, had a voice in my head the whole time going, holy shit, it's Luffy. For real, Godoy doesn't bullshit. Not every one of the adaptation's core actor grew up a One Piece fan, but Kenyu is half Japanese, and so was well acquainted with the hype. Zoro was always his favorite character. Emily Rudd knew exactly the number of manga chapters and anime episodes currently out. We wondered what we were going to do while the manga's on a four week break. We talked about the moment in Arlong Park when we both knew we loved One Piece. Godoy, however, had a different entry point. Quote, I knew One Piece because I'm very into comic books, video games. I specifically knew Luffy from a video game I used to play at my computer class. He told me bringing me viscerally back to a middle school vibe I hadn't thought about in ages. It was an online video game game and Luffy was one of the playable characters. I used to know him as, oh yeah, that's the guy with the crazy smile. Gibson too grew up getting One Piece love from his friends. He specifically mentioned friends' tattoos. Godoy went on to tell me about his process in landing the role, which honestly is perhaps the most Luffy-like way to land a major role that I could possibly imagine. Quote, I got my audition for One Piece. I didn't know it was for One Piece at first. As soon as I knew it was for One Piece, I sat down. I put on this YouTube video and it was like, who is Monkey D. Luffy? Let's analyze this. And then I did my callback and then I got the role. So thank you to that one YouTuber who made that amazing video analyzing the character because hey, it helped me out with my audition, dude. 
thanks, end quote. I asked Godoy about his experiences reading One Piece after getting the role. Quote, I didn't see the whole thing or read the whole thing, I just read enough so I could understand the essence of who Luffy was, end quote. He said, matter of factly, and as soon as I got that, I was like, well, I understand what this character is all about. He's a big dreamer, he's optimistic, he loves meat, he has a cool straw hat, he knows what sacrifice is all about, and he would do anything for his friends. So I know that, I can do my own thing with this now, so that was my process, end quote. Again, train right until you can make it your own. The parallels between Godoy and Luffy are readily apparent. Emily Rudd's obvious and genuine excitement made her the obvious every fan of the cast. Seeing her enthusiasm, you're naturally driven to congratulate her on the role. Rudd was told that the help me scene, if you know you know, I mean, we know, was screened for One Piece mangaka Eichiro Oda and his response was simply, it's perfect. Just in reliving that moment, Rudd was clearly emotional. Quote, I'm dead, she said. Put me to rest. That's it. It's over. Gibson, meanwhile, confided, quote, I was trying to find ways to sneak the Usopp hammer in there and Usopp rubber, band of doom. I was trying to sneak that one in there too. Gibson was excited and optimistic about his prospects, though eyes on the prize for that one. I'm definitely excited about the Alabasta arc, which has not been greenlit, but this is all just getting your mind into the character. Your body is another matter, and the cast of One Piece worked hard in that regard. Skylar described the cast's training routine, quote, it started with an hour a day. We then did two, then went up to three. Then we needed an extra trainer, and it was clear it still wasn't enough." End quote. They brought in more trainers. Skylar still has lessons with a black belt on Zoom every single day because he was determined to do all his own stunts and fights, and he did it. With the help of a lot of knee braces, copious stretching, and muscle aid sprays that smelled of oregano. Between all the physical training, about 10 hours a day, Skylar would practice his cooking skills with a production chef by helping to prepare dinner for the entire cast and crew. Quote, I'd rehearse dishes with that chef. We'd rehearse plating, we'd rehearse sauteing skills, knife skills, we'd cook huge batches of meals and take it to everybody, end quote. To make things extra natural, Skylar did all of this while in Sanji's chef outfit. Throughout the whole event, the sense of care, dedication, respect, and joy given to this series as a fan, you couldn't help but feel comforted. During the teaser screening shown to press in attendance and during supplemental footage shown by Netflix, the cast was cheering each other on in the corner. There was an obvious warmth and excitement exuding from them. It means a lot to us, Gibson told me, and we're very clear how much this means to so many people in the world. We just can't help but have that energy channel through us. In his introduction of the trailer to the press, Netflix director of original series Ted Biaselli also made clear that he was aware exactly how big One Piece is. That huge global community of Nakama is one of the most beautiful aspects of being a fan of the series, but one imagines it could also be a lot of pressure for the creatives delivering a risky seeming adaptation. So I asked Godoy how he was feeling, and his answer perfectly spoke to how One Piece is, at the end of the day, a series about finding your North Star to get through adversity. Of course there's a big pressure because you want to honor this character and you want to honor Mr. Eiichiro Oda and the world, you know? It's been going on for so long and there's so many people who have grown with this story. Godoy continued, but if there's one thing that Luffy has taught me throughout the time that I played him, it's that you gotta find a way to have fun. That's why I got into acting. That's why Luffy goes on adventures. Of course, it's hard, there's challenges, but it's fun. There was pressure, there were insecurities, but it was a lot of fun. I got into acting because I love it and I love playing Luffy, he brings me joy. So I just focus on having fun, that was my main goal. Friends, I don't think we could have possibly found a better Luffy or a better core cast in general. So yeah, that is the end of the article and pretty much all the important stuff to take away from the conversation that the journalists had with the cast of the main Straw Hat Pirates crew in the One Piece live action from Netflix. So yeah, I think there was some interesting stuff here. And like I said, I wanted to kind of do this article because I feel like there was a bit of interesting things to talk about from every one of the cast members. But I do think that there's other articles out there that are probably a bit more longer, a bit more in depth, focusing mainly on one of those cast members. So I'm going to probably try and find those and make videos separately on those and like make a video about each cast member specifically. But yeah, I felt like this one was a good one to kind of start with since it covers a little bit of everything from all the main cast members. So yeah, does that make you warm up to those cast members more or less? Do you still think that regardless of everything, We'll still have to wait and see based on their performance in the actual show. Let me know in the comments below. Please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me out a ton. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see y'all in the next video.